Hello and Happy New Year from us. I think I can still say that, right? Um, we're back home at our usual spot, and um, this little guy is getting ready for bed. Um, it's his five-month birthday today, so that's pretty special. Five months of wonderfulness and chaos and everything that comes with being a parent, being a dad. So we're enjoying that. And I figured tonight, little guy, we'd get back into our rhythm of stories, okay? And get back to the Marvel stories, because I told you Marvel Phase 1, and then we told them Star Wars Original Trilogy, you know, gotta start off right. So let's get into Marvel Phase 2 now, starting with Iron Man 3. Okay, you ready? And it's also, um, this is like a New Year's Christmas movie, if you recall, so I figured it fit for this time of year, too. Um, so once upon a time, Benny... In the Marvel Universe, there was a man named Tony Stark. You know about him, because you've heard the other Iron Man stories. And remember, um, Tony Stark wasn't always a nice guy. When he was younger, or, or even even a little bit earlier in his life, he was kind of selfish and greedy, and now he's he's mostly... He's starting to, to make some better life choices. But um, we saw a flashback to him a few years ago on New Year's Eve in Switzerland. Um, and he wasn't very nice to everyone. Um, and let's see, there was um, some project called Extremis or Extremis that was going on, and a man named Aldrich Killian who wanted to talk to Tony, but um, Tony wasn't nice to him because he thought he wasn't a cool guy or whatever. Um, and so he kind of left him stranded, uh, and Aldrich Killian wanted to start. Um, Advanced Idea Mechanics, or AIM, which is a, a sinister group in the comics. Um, so I'm sure that Tony snubbing him on, on New Year's Eve many years ago won't come back to bite him at all in any possible way. It will. Um, and then in the present, we have Tony, again, figuring out his life. Um, and we actually found out, so this is right after the Avengers, or maybe within a year after the Avengers, when aliens there in New York... And Tony is kind of scared and kind of um, kind of going through some stuff um, because you know he's the guy was always a guy with, a guy with a plan with a machine and a plan and, and the intellect to fix everything and save everything so he thinks but um, you know aliens and, and gods and space monsters and stuff like that are beyond his world and he doesn't know he doesn't know what to do so he's a little scared that the universe is bigger than him and kind of dealing with that in this movie, okay? Um, so keep that in mind. Um, he's like taking extra steps to to like build security for his house, for him and Pepper, because Pepper's his girlfriend and he likes her. And um, yeah, I think he, early on he had, a, he had like a panic attack in this movie. I actually did, I rewatched part of it recently, not the whole thing. Um, so I kind of remember the beginning and not the end, but that's okay. Um, this wasn't the best Iron Man movie. It's, I say it's better than Iron Man 2, but not as good as Iron Man 1, so it, it, it's alright, it's alright, it's just, it's got a few problems, but we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll let you enjoy it, Benny. Um, yeah, and let's see, and they were, um, War Machine became the Iron Patriot instead, because they thought that sounded better, and then, um, what else happened? Yeah, um, the Mandarin, so there was a bad guy named the Mandarin, who in the comics is one of Iron Man's biggest bad guys, um, he's like... A terrorist, kind of from oh, here. He's from from the Middle East, which is where Tony was in the first movie, um, and he um, like keeps making terror threats to the U.S. and his claiming responsibility for these bombings and stuff like that, and that's not good. Um, and Tony sets out to stop him, or he thinks he's going to stop him. Okay, um, and also let's see, Aldrich Killian comes back. Um, and in the present, he's all like suave and rich and stuff because people can change over over time. And he starts hitting on Pepper, and that's not good. But he also has some plan, like um, he wants to introduce their uh, his ideas, like um, aim and or extremis to them. Extremis spinning in this case is like a some kind of um, program that um, or some kind of technology. They use to like rewrite the DNA of, of a human being, so it's like almost like built-in armor, or it's like like Tony's armor is outside of him, but they were using this to like make the people like living robots or living bombs or something like that. Um, it's a little unclear, but we'll see some of it a little, little bit later on. Okay, so that was his big idea about like rewriting human DNA, which 
as with all comic book science, has lots of potential, but also lots of dangers. Um, and it's usually the bad guys, or at least the irresponsible uh, good guys who don't understand consequences, who are messing with stuff like that. Okay? So, there's the setup. Um, and let's see. Yeah, early on, I think there's like, a, like a, a, an attack... Um, and Happy, um, Iron Man's friend, Tony's friend, gets hurt in the attack. Um, and that's not good. And um, Tony's mad about that. And the attack was claimed by the Mandarin, because he's attacking people. And yeah, um, that's right, it was, it was a, a bomb um, that went off, but they, they couldn't find any remnants of a bomb, because, spoilers, Benny, the bomb was a human. It was someone who had extremis in them, and it was made to explode from the inside. So that's not good. And, um, so when Tony found out about that, that, that the Mandarin was behind this, he went on TV and threatened the Mandarin and was like, I'm going to come get you and, and you can't mess with me. And he gave him his home address, which sounded cool at the time and was big and bold, but it wasn't really smart because not long after that, uh, the Mandarin attacked Tony's home address. Um, that's right. Someone named, named Maya Hansen showed up. She was, um, someone who we knew a long time ago, um, who was part of the extremist project or whatever. And um, she showed up to kind of help him or talk to him about, about, about the problem or whatever. But then some missiles came to his house, and that's not good. Um, so his house got exploded, Benny. And he made sure an Iron Man suit got put on Pepper so she was safe and everyone was safe. Um, and Tony was able to use a suit, I guess, to get him out of there. But, um, but then it kind of took all his power because his house exploded and his, he took a beating. So the suit landed somewhere in like middle of nowhere, Tennessee, let's say, I don't know, middle of nowhere, on a snowy night, because it's Christmas time in the movie. Um, and he, then the suit kind of powered off because it had taken a beating. So suddenly he's um, just Tony Stark without his suit um, in the middle of nowhere and um, he can't repair it or anything. So um, he meets this, he goes from house to house kind of and um, or just looks for someone who can help him, and he meets this kid uh, in a garage. Um, the kid's name is Harley, and Harley ends up teaming up with Tony yeah. to um, get him some of the supplies he needs, and also teach him the true meaning of Christmas. Not really, but kind of. He kind of reminds him to be, you know, hopeful and kind and and idealistic again, because um, basically to teach him the true meaning of Christmas. Anyway, um, it's not quite. A Christmas Hallmark movie, but in some ways it's like that a little bit. Anyway, Benny. Um, so let's see. Harley helps him out for a while, and I think Harley like knows um, something about some of the some of the people who blew up from extremists. I'm not sure. Um, this is past where I watched recently, Benny. I mean, I watched the whole thing longer longer ago. Um, yeah, and so they investigate all that stuff and find there's some find some people who, um, like this one lady, I think, who had extremists in her and was like exploding and shooting lasers. And again, it wasn't armor. It was just like her body was able to do that because she had been mutated by extremists. Um, I think they fought her. Um, that sounds very familiar. Um, and I know I, I always say this, or I said this before, but like I, I'm a little fuzzy on the, on the middle of movies. I feel like I usually remember the, the beginning pretty well. Um, and... And the ending is usually climactic, or it's supposed to be at least, so I remember that pretty well. Sometimes sometimes the, the details in the middle get fuzzy on. But anyway, okay, we'll, we'll skip to near the end. Um, other stuff happens, antics ensue, I'm sure. Um, at the end, or near the end, toward the climax, I guess, um, or the anticlimax, as the case may be. I think it's kind of anticlimactic, honestly. Um, Tony is still looking for the Mandarin, because he hasn't found him yet, or, or even met, met him in person or anything. And he goes to where he thinks the Mandarin's hideout is. Um, and he finds the Mandarin just sitting there in a room with with some girls. And um, so he's like, okay, Mandarin, your time's up. Uh, or whatever, or, or something like that. So, but but um, the guy who's there um, is just kind of like a silly guy. And like, 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 he's like, ah, he's, like, he's, he's afraid. And um, he does not have the commanding presence of the real Mandarin. And Tony's like, okay, you can't be him. Who are you? And he's like, I'm just an actor named Trevor. So Benny, that guy wasn't the Mandarin at all. He was just someone who was kind of um, a puppet, 
kind of being used to strike fear into the hearts of people, but he wasn't the real bad guy. Someone else was behind him. And some people liked that touch. I thought it was kind of anticlimactic because they, they turned Iron Man's biggest villain into a joke, but that's just, that's just me. <clears throat> so, um, anyway, so that happened, and, and um, that guy wasn't the real bad guy after all, after all. And Tony was like, well, who's the real bad guy? And spoilers, Benny, it was Aldrich Killian all along. He was the real Mandarin. I mean, he, he wasn't like the Mandarin, but he said, uh, I mean, he's like, I'm the Mandarin. Or, I don't know. Um, oh, I know, I know. I didn't think it was the best decision either, okay? Okay? Hold on. I'm going to have to pause this one. No, you're okay? You're okay? <clears throat> Okay, I think we're done with the bottle. Um, he was not very happy with the Mandarin reveal, I guess. Um, he was crying pretty hard about it. I wasn't very happy with it either, but anyway. I digress. Let's finish our story, little guy, okay? So they had a big battle. Um, it was Tony versus Aldrich Killian. And I think Pepper was there too, and she, I forget, she, she somehow like, I don't know if she got Extremis into her, because that would have been fatal, I think, uh, eventually. But she had some kind of, I don't know, she was, she was somehow exposed to it. She, she was doing action-y things, which she can't usually do. I don't know if she got, like, one of Tony's suits. That happened in the comics, but not in the movie yet. Anyway, um, it was Tony and Pepper. Pepper was somehow doing action-y things, too. Um, fighting Audric Killian at the end. And Tony was, like, remote-controlling his suits. He was only doing this earlier, actually, too. And he got, like, a bunch of his Iron Man suits to fight Audric at different times, so that was cool. And Audric, of course, um had extremists too. So he, he had powers, like he had like, he was strong and shooting lasers and exploding and stuff. So there was a big fight with a lot of explosions and a lot of robot suits and a lot of violence. Pepper even says that was really violent because um, it was and she's not used to doing big action things like that. But there was a big fight and of course, Benny, remember the number one rule of superhero movies, the good guys always win. So in the end, they won and Tony defeated the bad guy. Um, and Tony and Pepper together defeated the bad guy. And um, then he kind of um, exploded all of his suits in like a fireworks display. It was um, that looked cool and I guess romantic with him and Pepper there at the end. And it was supposed to be his way of saying like, I'm learning not to be Iron Man or, or I'm, I'm, I'm learning like, you know, not to put so much stock in the suits. Um, and they kind of tried to make it a climatic, a climatic ending to his arc because it's his third movie, but the thing has been a um, he was in a bunch more movies, movies after that for like six more years of film continuity before the end of his arc. So it didn't seem as climatic as you might, might, might think it would be um, or, not, or not as impactful maybe as I wanted it to be. That's my opinion. I'll let, I'll let you judge for yourself. Um, in your but okay, he's getting restless and we're at the end of our story. So, and they all lived happily ever until the next Avengers movie when we'll see Iron Man again. Oh, poor guy. I think he's ready for bed. Okay. The end. And good night. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Good night.